These photos were taken before the roof of the outer ring had collapsed. The only visible damage to the outer wall is a single hole, no more than 16 feet in diameter. A Boeing 757 is 155 feet long, 44 feet high, has a 124 foot wingspan, and weighs almost 100 tons. Are we supposed to believe that it disappeared into this hole without leaving any wreckage on the outside? Why is there no damage from where the wings, or the vertical stabilizer, or the engines would have slammed into the building? Remember how big the engines were? If six tons of steel and titanium slammed into the Pentagon at 530 miles per hour, they would bury themselves inside the building, leaving two very distinct imprints. And yet, the only damage to the outer wall is this single hole, with no damage from where the engines would have hit. Why are the windows next to the hole completely intact? Why are the cable spools in front of the hole unmoved? As for the inside of the Pentagon, there's another hole, approximately 16 feet in diameter, found on the other side of the C ring, three rings from the impact. For that hole to have been caused by Flight 77, the Boeing would have had to smash through nine feet of steel reinforced concrete, traveling 310 feet. The nose of a commercial airliner is composed of lightweight carbon. This is what usually happens to the nose of a commercial airliner in a plane crash. If the nose caused this hole, where's the rest of the debris from the plane? So, what could blow a 16-foot hole on the outer ring of the Pentagon, smash through three rings, nine feet of steel-reinforced concrete, and leave another 16-foot hole? A 757? Or a cruise missile? This is what's sloping An up. excerpt of Loose Change, David Dunbar, executive editor of Popular Mechanics, your response. We just looked at the physical evidence, and when the filmmakers can present some evidence of a cruise missile striking the Pentagon, we'll be happy to look at it and evaluate it and talk to our experts. Just rolling the tape back a bit, the angle that the film shows of the facade of the Pentagon before it collapsed gives a misleading picture. That gash in the E-ring was about 90 feet across. No, no the, it was not. The, um, the wingspan of the plane was about 124 and change, not loose change, but um, that punched the hole into the building. And then the uh, landing gear was more dense and heavier and continued on through a forest of columns to smash that exit ring. So when you see that nice round hole, that's the exit ring, in the, that's the exit hole in the C-ring punched by the landing gear. And the, um, and Purdue University did a massive uh, computer um, reenactment of the, uh, of the crash and the aftermath. And uh, they worked with the American Society of Civil Engineers in preparation of their report. And it's conclusive that the plane did strike the Pentagon. Dylan Aper. Um, the initial impact on the Pentagon was no more than 20 feet wide, and if you're telling me that that initial round impact hole on the facade of the Pentagon is 90 feet, then you're telling me that the two windows above it are 30, are 30 feet across. And incidentally, about the windows, I'm glad you mentioned that. Those were recently replaced in the Pentagon as part of a whole renovation program designed specifically to be blast resistant after the, uh, after the explosions at the American embassies in East Africa. Yeah, I found it very convenient that Hani Hanjo decided to choose that one particular section of the Pentagon to hit when he could have just dove straight right into the front door. In the world of paranoid conspiracy <laughs> theories, you're not addressing there are, no, you're not addressing there are the no, there are no coincidences. You're not addressing the I would evidence. I'd just like to say this. Jason, the right. first official version was this thing bounced off the lawn and hit it. And it would appear that it would have to because it's such a low level hit. Okay, it didn't bounce off the lawn because there's no scratches on the lawn. On top of that, we actually interviewed the first person on the scene before the collapse, and he was on the lawn taking video of it for 12 minutes. His name is Bob Pugh, and it is no more than 16 to 20 foot hole. And we, we actually have one of the survivors who crawled out of that hole and said she saw no plane debris. Her name is April Gallup. Explain to me how a woman can come through a hole where a 757 has just impacted the building. 10 seconds, Jim Mack. Yes. We didn't fact check every detail of loose change, but what we did do was look at the broad cross section of uh, conspiracy theories. The, there are photographs of the plane in the building of wreckage wrapped around reinforced concrete columns, and there is a map of the path of destruction that plane 
tour through that area. We're going to go to a break. We want to get to the World Trade Center. We are talking with the editors of Popular Mechanics and the filmmakers who made the film Loose Change. Stay with us.